This video focuses on Interp1, MATLAB's built-in interpolator. MATLAB has a built-in interpolation function called Interp1. By default, it performs linear interpolation, but you can tell it to use a variety of other interpolation methods. We didn't really cover any advanced interpolation methods, so I strongly advise against using them. The syntax is pretty simple. It takes a minimum of three inputs. X is the X data, Y is the Y data, and B are the points at which you want to interpolate. If you end up using a nonlinear interpolation method, which I don't recommend, you can add a fourth input called other, which is just a placeholder for the name of the alternative interpolation method you're using. In ME2004, we won't bother with this, so we'll just be using three arguments, X, Y, and B. The output is FB, or the interpolated values. I've tried to keep the notation between this week's videos consistent, so if you go back to the 08A video, you'll see a similar notation with X, Y, B, and FB. Note that X and Y are the same size, and B and FB will have the same size. However, X and Y can have different sizes than B and FB. We'll explore this in the MATLAB demo. Finally, I want to emphasize the value of reading MATLAB's documentation. The interp1 documentation in particular has plenty of really good examples of usage and syntax and has additional syntactical information. Let's move into MATLAB for the demo. Okay, here we are in MATLAB. We'll interpolate using the formula shown in the previous video and through interp1. For notational purposes, the formula shown in the previous video is called Newton interpolation. Let's start the demo by recreating the results we obtained in the Newton interpolation video. We had our x data go from 0 to 3 in increments of 1 and our associated y data vector. Uncomment the plot commands and run the code to see the data appear on the plot. In the first video, we chose b equals 2.5 and calculated f of b to be 6.5. Newton interpolation also needs the two surrounding points, a and c respectively, and their associated y values, fa and fc. Instead of hard-coding in values for FA and FC, I'll use addressing. Now we need the Newton interpolation formula. We can see that after running the code, we get the same results as we did in the video. I'll plot this point so we can see it on the graph. This point with the red X is our interpolated point. Now let's try using the interp1 command. We need the X data as our first input, the y data as the second input, and our query value, or b, as the third input. Interp1 takes more inputs if we're doing a nonlinear interpolation, but we're not, so we only need these three inputs. I'll call the output fb2 so I don't confuse it with our fb from Newton interpolation. And once again, the results agree exactly. I'll add one last plot command for clarity. Don't forget to uncomment the legend command before you run the code. And this is just a visual representation of how we get the same answer using interp1 and Newton interpolation. So should you use Newton interpolation or interp1? 
Sometimes, we won't allow you to use interp1 on problems, but that doesn't mean you can't use it to check your answer. If we allow you to use interp1, by all means, go ahead. This is a really handy function I use in my research all the time, and I hope you'll appreciate the utility of not only interp1, but interpolation as a whole. See you soon.